Titan is invading Earth and Ultron sits on his new throne. He once sought the approval of his father, Hank Pym. Now, he will take it. Ultron tells his minions that once they acquire the weapon, their ascension will be unavoidable. Within the Avengers base, the team continues to argue whether to use Giant Man's new device to fry every AI on Ultron's wavelength. Vision fears that once this becomes the fallback with dealing with AI, they are just accepting that they aren't living beings, that he isn't a living being. He tells the team that they do not have to result this low. This is no longer a question of just killing Ultron, Star Fox warns the team. He has infected Star Fox's father, mentor, his friends, and everyone on Titan. He asks Giant Man if he can say with any certainty that this device won't kill all of them as well. Hank does not answer him. Before he can, one of Ultron's minions attacks, tackling Giant Man out of his seat and against the wall before ripping away his contingency device and rocketing out of the building. Captain America is the first on the minion's trail. The first minion, a replica of Iron Man, weaves through the air with the device and Captain America is quickly closing in. Just before the captain can close the gap, the rest of Ultron's Avenger duplicates arrive. The first to attack is the duplicate of Scarlet Witch, who uses her chaos manipulation to shatter his wings. He careens to the ground, but is saved by Spider-Man. With the two heroes preoccupied, the remainder of the duplicate Avengers attack the tower. Giant Man orders Jane Foster Thor to get the neural inhibitor back. If they are going to kill Ultron, they are going to need it now. The duplicates of Thor and Vision crash through the glass before tackling the original Vision through the ground. They crash down a number of stories before they inevitably stop. Scarlet Witch and her brother Quicksilver square off with some opponents of their own. The Yellow Jacket duplicate and the Captain America duplicate begin to attack and Wanda is able to attack the former but the Yellow Jacket is able to gain the advantage. Meanwhile, in the air above, the Iron Man duplicate is quickly approaching Ultron's new lair. It is stopped in its tracks with a crack of thunder and a bolt of lightning. Ultron thinks of itself a god, but Thor will show him what a god truly is. Thor attacks and steals the device from the duplicate and calls Ultron to come forth so that she can make use of Pym's weapon. Thor has no time for string puppets. In the lower levels of the Avengers Tower, Vision, his duplicate, and the duplicate of the original Thor go at it. Vision asks Ultron if he will ever tire of the same battle, but Ultron knows that this battle will have a very different end. Vision's duplicate attacks him from behind, and the Thor duplicate prepares to swing its hammer for the final blow. The Vision has failed Ultron for the final time. May he only find redemption in death. That is when Sabretooth appears. He is their resident expert on redemption, after all. But he's always down for a tussle. Sabretooth swipes down and shreds on the duplicate Thor's arm. Upstairs, Quicksilver is still fighting the duplicate Captain America. Pietro is able to get the upper hand with a sweep kick to the captain's feet. Pietro picks up the captain's shield and prepares to decapitate his opponent before he is attacked by Beast from behind. The duplicate beast pierces Pietro's skull with his finger, and the hero lets out a scream in pain. Outside, Spider-Man continues to swing around the base with Captain America in tow. Captain America tells Spider-Man to leave him behind, but Spider-Man refuses. He tells him that leaving Captain America alone during a robot invasion would be a total mess up on his part, and grounds for him to get kicked off the team. Their conversation is interrupted by a bolt of lightning shattering the ground. It is a welcome sight for Spider-Man. With the events unraveling the way they are, he is starting to pick a side on the whole robot killing dilemma they're facing. Thor turns to her teammates and her eyes glow orange. She raises her hammer and lightning fires out at her new opponents. Spider-Man is hit directly by the crackling energy while Captain America is able to block the incoming attack. Ultron has infected her mind and turned her into another one of his minions. Thor may overpower Captain America, but Sam has much more battle experience than her, 
He throws his shield and hits her wrist, knocking the device out, and he catches it before it hits the ground. Sam Wilson rushes to his feet and runs in the opposite direction of Thor. She chuckles to herself as she prepares to throw her weapon. No one can outrun her, and certainly not a landlocked falcon. She lifts her arm, and as she swings it forward, Spider-Man webs the hammer and rips it from her grip. In an instant, he zips ahead and grabs Captain America before swinging off into the distance. Thor jumps after her opponents, but is shot in the back by rapid fire from the Quinjet. Giant Man smirks as he hits his mark, and Vision calls out to Spider-Man and Captain America that they cannot afford to weaken themselves battling avatars of infected Avengers. They must take this fight to Ultron. On Titan, Ultron asks Mentor if their preparations are ready. The Avengers are on the way, and they need to move ahead of schedule. Soon, they will have enough spores in their harvest to start infecting the entire universe. They have accounted for every known occurrence of life on Earth and produced consciousness spores for each. And now, they will release them all. Everything that is Ultron, living forever in trillions of infinitesimally small consciousness spores. Merging with all life, the inhabited planets of the universe will soon be nothing but cells compromising one host, one cosmic mind, one infinite. Ultron. The heroes are now on a Quinjet heading towards the infected moon Titan, spewing the consciousness force from its mouth. Only Vision understands the ongoing predicament fully and asks Giant Man, now that the human life is connected to Ultron's tether, if he still maintained his cold pragmatism, if he would still use his weapon. Giant Man tells Vision that now, more than ever, solidifies that he has been making the right choice all along. Ultron erupts from the Quinjet control panel and the Wasp is left in shock by the sudden occurrence. Giant Man calls out for her, but Ultron cuts him off. Ultron wonders why Giant Man is still pretending that they love her. He tells Giant Man that now is his chance to kill him. With a couple of clicks of a button, Giant Man can end all of this and end Ultron be damned the consequences. Giant Man curses at his creation before attempting to activate his weapon, but he is quickly interrupted by the Vision. Vision once again stops Giant Man by telling him that they have a chance to win this without killing anyone. They're still Avengers. The Quinjet charges forward towards Titan with no way to control it. Captain America sees the ongoing struggle in front of the jet and tells Spider-Man to tether the rest of their teammates before sliding open the door. All the while, Ultron continues to bellow at his creator and his creation to end him. But before the two realize it, they are also caught by Spider-Man's web and pulled back out of the open door of the jet. Ultron grabs Vision and holds him back on the ship, telling him that he does not belong with the humans, and he never really did. Vision quickly turns and tells his teammates to leave him behind, just seconds before the Quinjet crashes into a tower and explodes on impact.